Good morning. So in today's lesson, I'm going to talk to you about how to bless your enemy kingdom style. Now we know how the world does it, right? It's an eye for an eye, a two for a two. Hey, if they catch you slipping, that's it. They exposing you, right? But in the kingdom of God, we operate differently. That's right. We learn how to bless our enemies instead of curse them. We learn how to be a shield and cover them when we could expose them. How do you respond when you catch your enemy slipping? When you see your enemy naked and you have an opportunity to expose them for everything they are. Do you respond in grace? Do you bless them or do you expose them? Today we're going to talk about how we move in the kingdom with the story of Elijah. So let's get to it. You know, God has divine protection over his chosen ones, those who trust in him. And I want to show you in the word of God where Elijah was divinely protected. You know, there were all kinds of people planning wicked things against the man of God because they wanted to shut him up. They wanted to silence the prophet of God, right? They wondered how Elijah knew what he knew. They thought surely there was a spy among them that was going back and telling Elijah, the man of God, what they were saying in their inner bedroom chambers. But what they realized, what they came to understand is it wasn't so. You know who the spy was that was revealing the inner things that they were speaking in their bed chambers that they thought no one would hear, no one would know? It was God. You know, if God be for you, who can be against you? He will let you know what's going on in the inner thoughts of a man's heart. He will let you know what's being said behind closed doors where there was no way you could ever know but through his provision. So I want you to be of good cheer because God will keep you. He will preserve you. He will even give you understanding. He will let you know who is for you and who is secretly against you. He will reveal to you those things that are being said in the inner chambers. And this disturbed the king so greatly because he said, how in the world does he know these things? And I want to reveal to you what was said in verse 12. I'm reading first from 2 Kings chapter 6. And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elijah the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. And therefore sent he thither, horses and chariots and a great host and they came by night and compassed the city about and when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth behold a host compassed the city both with horses and chariots and his servant said unto him alas my master how shall we do and he answered fear not for they that be with us are more than they that be with them and Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw and beheld the mountain was full of horses and chariots and fires round about Elijah. And that's what I want to say, and I want to pray over you. Father God, open their eyes that they may see that there are more with us than against us to fear not what man can do to you, but fear the living God who has both the power to kill the soul and the body. Hallelujah. Amen. In Jesus' name. And when they came down to him, Elijah prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite these people, I pray thee, with blindness, and be smot them with blind I'm sorry, and he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elijah. Prayer from the righteous is powerful. The Bible says the effectual prayer of the fervent of the righteous, it availeth much. That means it is very powerful that the words that a man or woman of God that is in um right connection with God it is powerful and so his prayer was for them to smite those armies with blindness so that they couldn't even see where they were going and it changed their reality it changed their perception one word one prayer from Elijah and everything shifted everything changed and now these people are smot with blindness they don't know whether they're coming or going they're after the man of God but in this moment, God smites them with blindness and he will do the same thing for those that come up against his children of God in this day. He will smite them with blindness. So you got to know this word of God, right? 
because there's nothing new under the sun and you're able to apply what is in it. And it says, and when they came down to him, I'm sorry, I read that. And Elijah said unto them, this is not the way, neither is this the city. Follow me and I will bring you to the man whom you seek. But he led them to Samaria. <laughs> and it came to pass when, then, when they were coming to Samaria that Elijah said, Lord, open the eyes of these men that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes and they saw and behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. And the king of Israel said unto Elijah, when he saw them, my father, shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? And he answered, thou shalt not smite them. Wouldest thou smite those whom thou hast captive with thy sword and with thy bow? Set bread and water before them that they may eat and drink and go to their master. Listen, this is powerful. Because instead of him having the opportunity to smite and to kill his enemy, those who were after him, those who were sent to hold him captive, he did not do the same. He did not return an eye for an eye, but he fed his enemies. He blessed his enemies. He gave food to his enemies. In this hour, child of God, this is your divine strategy. You are to bless your enemies, those that were pursuing you. You have the authority and the power in Christ to pray powerful prayers. His prayer was that they would be smite with blindness, that he would shut their vision down so that he turned them in the wrong direction, sent them back to where they came, had the opportunity to take them out, but instead showed them mercy, showed them grace so that it was known that God was with them him right and so it will be for us child of God that all will know that God is with us right by our grace by our mercy he had the opportunity to take him out but he didn't and he prepared great provisions for them and when they had eaten and drunk he sent them away and they went to their master so that bands of Syria came no more into the land of Israel. They didn't try that again. They knew that it was by mercy and grace that their lives were spared and they no longer entered the land of Elijah. They no longer entered his land because they knew that they, man, it was by God's grace that they were alive. And so it will be for your enemies, child of God. So I want to share that with you all, that God has the power to even change those who are coming after you, to change their reality, to change their perception. They didn't know what direction they were coming. They needed uh, Elijah to point them in the right direction, right? Led them right into Syria before the king. And the king was like, should I take their heads off? And Elijah was like, no. Let's give them water, let's give them bread, let's bless them and we'll send them right back on their way to report to their king what the Lord hath done through this man of God. And I just think that that is powerful. So apply the principles in the word of God, bless your enemies and see won't God open up a door for you of, that is just so wonderful, that is just too amazing that your name will go forth into the land and bring great fear because this was a true man of God. All right, guys, I love you. Be blessed and I'll see you next time. Bye.